in the project coming up I'm going to want to use a lot of um, temperature sensors uh, so I've decided to do a quick project to have a look at how temperature sensors work and, and how to connect them to the Raspberry Pi uh, so I'm looking at a thermistor which is a 100k um, device and this is a, a digital well it's got an analog output but I think internally it behaves digitally it's a um, MCP device which is a, a, a thermometer device and it outputs an analog signal directly proportionate to the temperature so I'm going to compare those two uh, with a quick Python program so I've put together a circuit here uh, and in the middle I've got an analog to digital converter which is MCP3002 it's got two analog channels uh, and then I've got the two devices here plugged in, in with two cables I've tied the devices together so that I get roughly the same kind of reading for, from both devices so I can compare them um, uh, and across each device I've got a 10 nanofarad capacitor and that's so that if there's any noise on the signal it, it can dampen the noise down and for the thor thyristor I, it's a 100k thyristor so I've put in series with it a 100k resistor which creates a potential divider so that I can get like an analog signal which I can plug into or pass into the analog to digital converter so that's a closer look at the two tied together So I've written a, a Python program to demonstrate reading the temperature sensors and displaying them in a graphed result. Uh, and in this directory, I've got this file called device.cfg. And this is a configuration file for my Raspberry Pi SPI driver, um, which I did in a previous project. If I show you what's in there, so that's just a single line, which configures the MCP3002 to be controlled from the de device driver. So in order to configure that, I have to cat that file into dev rpi spi and then if i take a look at what's in proc rpi spi i can see the configuration and i can see that it's set up for this device and there's two ports i can read for each of the values uh, and also incidentally the the clock speed for the spi um, you Displays can run a lot quicker than the analog to digital converter. So if you want to use analog analog to digital converter, you need to it down in the range of something like 32. And the higher the value, the slower the SPI communication is. So if you're still getting issues reading the reading the sensor values, then I would try increasing this uh, number even higher than 32. Um, so if I actually run the program. And it displays the graph. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sensors and I'm going to put them in front of a desk lamp and you see that the values um, climb up as the sensors heat up. The thing about the sensors is uh, both of these sensors and I don't know if it's any different from any, any other sensor is that there is a time it takes for them to respond to heat and then the time to cool down as well. So, But they're right, rising up there so if I take the sensors now away from the desk lamp, they should fall back down again. So they start to fall now. I'll just go into the Python program. So I'll, I'll oops, control. So, so I'll just leave that running in the background. Bring up the Python program. Takes a little while on X Windows. Okay, so at the top of the Python program is a, a couple of variables which you can use to um, set, set the plot axes. So here, this one is if you wanted to leave over 24 hours, um, then the plot the total X axis would cover 24 hours. Here, if you want to leave over quarter of a uh, quarter of an hour, then use that and I'm using it over five one hundredths of an hour just to get the quick response for this demonstration and then the other axis you can set so I've set that so this particular line would if you uncommented it would, would set the x-axis to 30 degrees celsius as maximum uh, but I've got it currently as 100 degrees celsius for maximum 
because um, I'm responding to something which is going to be a lot hotter, which is the, the lamp. Um, but just to quickly explain through the program, I'm not going to go over into much detail. I've got constants um, def defined at the top here. So if you ever wanted to do, change any bit of the program, m most of the variables are, are um, set up there. I've got this, which is used to read the RPI SPI device driver. So that's a nice and simple small uh, function to do that. Then the only other function is this, um, and it goes through in chunks of code. So this reads one of the temperature sensors, the MCP temperature sensor, and scales it appropriately to give you. Uh, so it gives you. The, I've scaled it so that it can represent it in volts and the actual temperature value. And then this is the thermistor, and I've also done some code to try and increase the accuracy of it because the thermistor has a kind of a response curve so it's not like a linear very straight one degree equals so much um, movement um, so in here I've just messed around with them um, trying to correct it using a sine wave and then here I've used uh, I've just got a little program which captures um, the values um, for every degree of the MCP sensor I save a value of both sensors so that I could calibrate so I've got like a set of values I calibrate the thermistor against that's not really that important but um, so here I just clear the display ready to display the stuff I draw the calibration data that's in the top right hand corner so they're, they're the graphs up there and there's a bunch of code for drawing that then I draw the MCP temperature sensor the thermistor temperature sensor. Now draw the graph title. The, the current readings. Draw the graph axis, x and y. Sorry, x and y. Uh, and then I just increment to the next value. So as I'm, as I'm going across, this is just a brief explanation, just um, going through. And this is the main part of the program uh, where it initializes it. It sets up uh, variables initially. It loads calibration values from last time if I was collecting over a, a couple of um, sessions. And it just goes into a loop and it waits for um, either a quit signal or the event timer which does the, the uh, main part of the program at the top uh, but I'm not going to go into too much more detail there's a lot of, there's a, I've put a reasonable number of comments in, in the code